So we got an eBay block here from Bion in this first game. You love to see it. Uh, this is something that it's pretty much only Bion and I, TY. I mean, TY is in military, but um, the only kind of Bion that DIY does. And granted, Bion, he's not going to get a really strong block here. Um, because, of course, he sent the SCV into the main base. So he's going to get like 50% completion before it got shooed away. And, uh, well, means he's not going to delay the natural as long as it possibly could. But still, it's going to be annoying here for Hero. You know, Bitterwood, I mean, it's not like Kevin Spacey was known as being an incredibly unattractive person. He just happens to, you know, be a predator and not a great person. Uh, because, I mean, realistically, if someone's comparing you to celebrity for the most part, they're saying you look like that person, not like you are like that person. Um, you know. Yeah, I'm glad to see Bjorn looking better because, yeah, he <laughs> first game. Well, he made some decisions that I don't think were the right ones at all but after that he found ways to end up back into games in game number two and winning game number two really won him that series because that was a game that he was pretty far behind in but he was able to make it work and uh i mean from that point on he just did not look back and yes it's sc2 time son sc2 action indeed but what what is that vase next to your i can't go mouse over it because i if i tab out it's going to be lag but um what is that base uh, logo next to your next to your name? That's not an Alpha X. Um, it's not an Alpha X sub badge. Now uh, Waxwing Slain. Beyond is I I I don't think he. I think he's more than around in twenty four. I think I think he, he he in general should have what it takes to get out of the uh, code A. The issue is. He has a, um, what's the word? The, uh, when you have a physical condition that is just, uh, like, a, uh, a psychological condition that manifests itself physically. Um, so where he go, like, he has had a lot of work done by the Shopify Rebellion on his wrists. And what the doctors have pretty much come to the conclusion of, because it, o it only happens sometimes, and really only happens in the GSL studio, it doesn't happen when he's, like, playing these series, or these tournaments from home, is that there's something about the GSL studio that just is stress or something that he may he holds himself differently, and that causes this wrist pain. Psycho, it's, is it psychosomatic? Yeah, I think so. Huh. <laughs> Hello, really wild Adam. My name is Beowulf. Yeah, no, I, Shopify and NV with Maru as well. Uh, have been doing a pretty good job of taking care of their world-class Terrans. I mean, uh, the Raider, I don't know if that's a fair assessment. Uh, because in a lot, like... It's like, um... I don't know, you play a traditional sport. And you are, you're from Arizona. So you're used to pr training at sea level. And you gotta go because uh, you say it's it's a college sports or something or you know, pro sports, whatever. And you go play your opponent in Colorado, right? That's at you know four thousand feet of elevation, you know five thousand two hundred eighty feet. If you go play in uh, uh, in Boulder, and you know that's gonna be a disadvantage, right? That is just going to be a situational disadvantage for you. Nice job here, Beyond's not gonna take any damage from these blink stalkers. So he will get one and the observer as well. Okay. Yeah. IEM is offline. I'm hoping IEM is offline this season. They're saying it is. But who knows? It's not the yips. It's just more like the, the stress of playing offline or whatever, or the just the desk setup. I'm not really sure. Forces there just to be much more stress on Beyond's wrist, and then he just kind of falls apart. Uh, yeah, but that was the big reason we saw him not get out of uh, Code A last season, was he looked really good, and he's like, oh, my wrists, I start, I'm, you know, I'm in, the, I'm in tremendous pain. And we just see his performance fall off a cliff. So hopefully he, he's going to be able to, I, hopefully he's in, uh, he's getting counseling for that. Hopefully he's going to be able to overcome whatever the, whatever the cause of this psychosomatic condition is. And uh, we're going to go from there. 
Now that, that's the crazy thing, Maverick. It's not really a, a wrist issue. You know, it's a it's a mental issue that manifests itself in wrist pain. Oh yeah, yeah, gwee gwee. And shout out to Day Nine Dailies. Um, I'm actually pretty lucky in that, like, one of the last of Day Nines, actual. Okay, okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is actually really cool, and it's it's not just a meme. So we see Hero here. He has made some hallucinated probes, and you're like, why in the world would Hero make some hallucinated probes? And the answer is, well, you get two of them for the price of one hallucination. So if you're not trying to find your way on into the main base. And just trying to get a good idea of where their Terran army is. Yeah, hallucinate some probes. Run them all over the map and just get really good map vision. Uh, reality, as someone who is trained in Arizona and had to go practice and had to go play tournaments in uh, much higher elevation places, the... Um, the elevation is a much bigger deal uh, than the heat is. We do have Beyond. He's going to get move on in here. Now, his medevacs will get target fired on down, which means this will eventually get cleaned on up. The question is, how many workers can he target fire down before that happens? Five, six, seven, eight. This is too much damage here from Beyond. Nine workers will go down. And all of a sudden, Beyond is in a wonderful spot in this game. Uh, now, that being said, Hero has a terrifying army. He has three Colossus. There are two tanks. There are two Vikings. That is just about it. There's not a lot of anti-Colossus tech here from Hero in this game. However, Beyond has not been looking to take his third base yet. And so he should be in a decent spot here. It's going to be very difficult for Hero to look to break the high ground. I mean, Blink Stalkers are something, sure, but this is not an easy break. This is not an easy high ground, high ground break. Stalkers look to Blink on in and they just die. Did you get four probes? I thought it was two. Okay, never mind. Yeah, oh, that's right. It's two Zealots. Okay, so I love what Beyond's doing here. He, he's pretty confident in his ability to hold on uh, the high ground, because, I mean, it, the high ground uh, of this game. So now he's just going to put a drop here on the other side of the map, make Hero truly all in. And so Hero's going to have to go. He's going to have to go right now any longer, and it's just going to be any even worse. So now SCVs are going to get pulled here. Tanks firing away at these Colossus, but they're not knocking them down. The three Colossus, they still remain in, folks. You got to kill the Colossus to win the game. So the tank's firing strong, but it's not going to be enough at the end of the day. Beyond does too much damage. Spotting in the upper right, upper left, excuse me, in the red. He's up one game in this best of five grand finals. Give it up for Beyond. And in the bottom right here in the blue, down one game. But man, you know what? He had chances, and I really thought he was breaking beyond there in that last game for Dragon Phoenix Gaming. Hero. But if you all are ever curious what the bracket is, you can use exclamation mark B or exclamation mark bracket to find that bracket. Much like you, you can use exclamation mark Mascherino to go and uh, figure out and to go to the match arena page click the claim code link add 50 cents to the prize pool just like that and go from there all right so here's what happens other people that have uh, subscribed to the same channel that ticks has subscribed to you also need to uh, spam the middle cat thing and that's how we're going to build a long cat we need some teamwork here, folks. Because as we all know, teamwork makes the dream work. So we got a proxy. Uh, looks like it's going to be a proxy target here from Hero in this game number two as uh, well. Actually, I mean, it's a bit late for a proxy, uh, proxy target, but in the position in it's in and the timing, I mean, it's going to be close enough. So most likely proxy target here for Hero in this game number two and we're gonna have to see how much damage it can get done i mean this is not proxy voids this is just gonna be for an oracle hero doesn't really like voids anyways as far as i've seen
Okay, nice move here with his adept to try to knock down the command center, but will he just barely, just barely not in time. Oh, that's unfortunate there for Hero. And I mean, that's what happens when you just don't block the command center quite long enough. Because that is the goal, right? When you send a probe out early on, you're like, yeah, I'm just going to block the command center so I can make sure my adepts make something happen early on. Some of these adepts, they're going to go on in and, oh, the command center is down. He doesn't commit? I mean, I, I get it. In part, the goal of this is to kill off Marines, right? So the Oracle is more powerful, but you don't commit to a Miner line when you have two Adepts and there's just nothing there? That is, um, hmm. I don't know that that was the play, but now the Adepts are going to shade on in. And this time there are three of them. So Marines are going to get one tap for the time being, and they're going to just target down whatever they can get. Again, killing anything at this point is going to be just the most important thing. He's removing anti-air that makes the Oracle so powerful. So now Oracle can just dive on top of the rest of these Marines, kill them off. You need five to kill the Oracle, but it's only three. So the Oracle 100% uncontested now. There's a mineral line here, and that is wide open. But okay, there's a Viking. Never mind. Never mind, folks. I got excited. I said, wow. This opener from here is looking really good. And it is to some extent. I mean, he killed two workers. He killed a bunch of Marines. But, um... Nice timing there from beyond to make sure that he did not lose anything more than necessary. So we got this, uh, I don't know, kitchen sink build? That was a hero viking. Um, but yeah, so we got this kind of kitchen sink job going out from Bion. He's got a cyclone because he wants to stay safe against the Stargate stuff. He's got a couple Marines because that's what he's going to do. He's going to move out on the map. Just try to remove units on the map here for uh, hero. And oh, he's going to find, I think. Yeah, he's going to find this. Um, is he a vision on that? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, he knows where that is. But now... We're going to see an or a second Oracle actually with me. It's going to find a dive on in. But hey, Widow Mines, they do good work. So that is a grand total of five. Five SDVs have died for two Oracles and four Adepts. Honestly, just about equal. Uh, but now here, Bjorn is going to start to find some damage. And well, we all know how good Vikings are against a bunch of probes. So uh, what is that going to be? Four probes will go down. And Bjorn now, he's only down seven workers, which is pretty acceptable. That's kind of where you expect to be, all things considered. So... All the early game shenanigans that we have seen have led to a pretty equivalent, uh, pretty standard economic position. Now, here for his part, he's going double forge in this game as uh, he kind of is assessed that he's done enough damage to keep Beyond back, which I think was true. Now, the damage that he's taken may mean that uh, that's not as true as it once was, but well, certainly for the time being, he's going to be in a decent spot. And the nice blink there is going to get the meta back as well. So, Stargate's not even going to go down. I mean, not, I don't think he's going to repower it. I don't think that's the goal, but still. Nice job there. Is now he, uh, he's going to get aggressive. And these random Widow Mines are just so annoying. <laughs> like, you'll, you'll love to see a player do this. Okay, so now we got a tank here on the low ground. No tank on the high ground. It's just about done here. Now Byer's going to look to stim on in. This is a bait, folks. Beyond says, oh, yeah, you're going to blink on my tank. There's nothing defending this. I can just go kill a bunch of stalkers because stim is done and stim is a powerful thing against a bunch of blink stalkers. Well done there from Bjorn. He's going to... Oh, yeah. No, he's going <laughs> to... This is not something that your hero wants to do now. Now we're going to see third base get taken on location. Plus one is just about done. Combat shields, well... Just about done as well. So now it's Bjorn's turn to get active on the map once again. And uh, folks, here is the key stat. 42 army supply to 16. So Bion really has the timing here that he can make use of. Although it looks like he's uh, kind of doing the more middle of the road. You know, taking his third base at that seven minute timing. But he's going to get plus one armor. He's not really running across the map with a bunch of units. And having lost his tanks does kind of contribute to that. Instead, he's just going to double drop with, uh, well, what is that? 14 odd, odd marines and two marauders. 
on into the main base here and uh this is gonna do some damage here folks it's not gonna cancel charge which is gonna be unfortunate but it's just gonna stim on and try to get on top of these stalkers and uh well that's gonna do something but it said no just stim on into the mineral line get two workers actually not all that not all that much but he should be able to find the natural here or the third base and maybe okay yeah just gonna back on up okay Yun not getting as much damage as he would possibly have liked Yeah, Byun, after game number one against uh, against uh, Joe Un, just said, you know what? I'm not winning. I'm not losing ZVP or TVPs anymore. That's just not, it's not, that shit's not going to fly. Uh, so, well, he's looking rather good. 1-1 one, one just about done for Hero. So Byun's not going to want to move out just now, not with 1-1 one, one completed. Uh, he's going to wait until his 1-1 one, one is done as well. And now we have an armory on the field. We have a second eBay as well. Byun just powering up. His, his economy is better than the Protoss player. I mean, yeah, he's down two workers, but, I mean, mules, folks. Mules are a powerful thing indeed. It's not like there are a bunch of DTs that are forcing a bunch of scans that prevent that from happening. So, yeah, now he's building a big army. He doesn't have the army supply lead that he once had that he would you kind of would expect him to have. But that's because he's been committing a lot into production, a lot into tech, that will allow him to start to bolster that supply lead once again. So now the bio here on the right-hand side, it's just going to find this one zealot, and concussive shells are not done, so chasing that down is not really going to be a thing unless he wastes his stim. But okay, yeah, there, there we go. Finally, this, uh, this target's going to go down, and the zealot, okay. All right, so now the bio's gonna look to stem on in here. There's not a lot here to defend this fourth base. Yeah, we see some warpins, but all the army of hero is in the main base and the natural. So this drop in the third base is getting some damage. 11 probes have died, and now the medevacs on into the main base here, or maybe that, yeah, the natural actually is starting to see once again, Bion is starting to snowball here with his harassment. He is, yeah, he has the wrist traps on today. He has come to play as 18 workers, 20 workers are gonna go on down. Once again, Bion is gonna force hero into an all in position. And I mean, ghosts are now going to hit the field. It's just going to be charge lot Archon against ghosts, against medevacs, against tanks, against a wall here. Yeah, here does have a fourth base. But it's not a fourth base he's mining from efficiently. Uh, so he's now down on 56 workers once again. That being said, his 2-2 timing versus the 2-2 of Byun is going to be a good deal faster. So if he can make something happen right now, if he can catch Byun's army in the open field, which is not something that Byun is really allowing... Maybe that's going to be his opportunity. But no, he's going to he's gonna just work to probe on up one skin. Four probes at a time, because hey, four bases at a time. Uh, and just try to make something happen like that. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but it's not like he's going to break Bion in this game. Not really. Marines in an open field, Ned. And that's a lot of zealots. But okay, we're going to have Bio Stim on into this third base, which, by the way, is wholly undefended. It's funny. There's so much outside of that fourth that, uh, well, Bion says, okay, well, undefended third, undefended main. Let's get more workers here. It's kind of funny, actually. We've been talking about these uh, these two players. We're like, well, Hero, when I think of his identity right now, is we're going to see some massive EMPs go on in. Now, 2 two's not done, but okay, anyway. 21. <laughs> so many workers go down. This is actually insane. Um, when I, It's funny. When I think of a player's identity, Hero is one of those players that yeah, may, his army control is fantastic, his Blink Stalker control is fantastic, but the way he's come back from the military, the way he's playing right now is all about his harassment ability, making it so that his opponent is just never allowed to play the game because, well, he just gets too much damage done in the early game. So what am I again? Uh, only two workers there, but it's fine. Oh, there we go. Uncaught there. Eight workers will go down. This uh, fourth base, yeah, Hero's mining for him, but he's down 27 workers. It doesn't really matter anymore. And, um, okay, so these charges will get on top of this army, and it is even upgrades, and the ghosts are out of energy, so it's not going to be all that effective. But Bion has been able to cancel plus three attack, and that plus three armor is just not going to be as effective as other things might be. And yeah, the bio is going to get cleaned on up, but if we see Bion just kind of sit back for a moment, as he's going up to eight racks, uh, just sit back for a moment, build up an army supply lead with the fact that he is, uh, mining a decent amount more. Really, it's all in the gas. 
Uh, Beyond's going to be in a really fantastic spot. So now, just snipes down on a lot of these zealots. And, you know, ghosts in general, they fight zealots extremely well because if zealots are light units, ghosts are not. And, uh, yeah, ghosts, of course, do bonus damage to light. So zealots are going to look to stream on in, do what they can, into the meat grinder of the Terran. As now they go back behind the wall. Ghosts, of course, here looking to land those EMPs. All the zealots are running down. Starker's doing what they can, but what they can is not good enough. Zest. No, not Zest, excuse me. Hero, he's down to half the supply of what Beyond has. We're gonna have to see some snipes maybe on that War Prism if uh, Beyond's looking for it, but uh, that is not a fight that Hero was looking for. Beyond's now up 50 supply. He's got his fourth base done. He's up 30, or he's up 20 odd workers. The Zealots look to run on in once again. We're gonna see some good EMPs. Uh, yeah, there we go. EMPs down on top of all of these Zealots. Half their uh, HP gone in a second. And every time Hero looks to make this, this engagement happen, he loses more. Beyond does not. And, uh, I mean, now there's going to be a planetary on the fourth base. More and more ghosts being produced. 3-3 three, three is getting closer to being finished. And, I mean, when 3-3 three, three is done, this is not going to be a fight that heroes can be able to take in the slightest. Already, these EMPs are, gonna, are making it damn hard indeed. There we go. At the last of the, the Widow Mines, once again, Widow Mines don't care about your armor upgrades. And uh, now with these tanks here on the field as well, just extra splash deal with these zealots. They look to run on in. Beyond just standing straw at this point, doesn't even really need to feel the micro anymore as he's going to, well, he's going to take everything. GG, Beyond, he's up 2-0. to zero. In the red, he's up 2-0 here. In this grand finals, he's looking absolutely dominant on a streak of five straight TVP wins. He is Beyond. And in the bottom left, in the blue, he's down two. Can he take it back? Will we get a game number five for Dragon Phoenix Gaming? Hero. Thank you, Sloza. When I was in high school, and actually the, the reason I kind of got into casting for the first place, it, or in the first place, is that I um, I went to a small uh, private school, and so I, I was on good terms with the headmaster. Actually, funnily enough, that the head of my school went to uh, high school with my dad back in the day, um, and we live further, far, pretty far away from my, where my dad grew up. But uh, he's like, "Oh, hey, you know, Philip, you got a great voice for radio," and you know, I we now we all know he was just saying that I have a face for radio and just trying to make it sound nice. But I'm like, oh, you know, I can talk good. Maybe I can talk about StarCraft. Aw, oh, man, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry you got spam timed out for the emotes, Alejandro. And Wild Hunt, if I, um, if I did push-ups every time I lost a game of StarCraft, I would be so ripped. Actually, I probably wouldn't be able to touch the keyboard. Um... As I just be shaking too much, uh, you know, you know, like that. But when, when you just really work out hard and your art, just your body feels weak afterwards, it's a good feeling. But uh, yeah, <laughs> um, this is interesting though. From here, so we see a Stargate going down to the main base, but also a proxy pylon. And I, okay, so the probe is dead. So I'm not. This may just be for like a couple of depth warpins later on. <laughs> How to do push-ups when the tears make the floor slippery. This is why we do push-ups push on carpet, Dana Daniel. So it, uh... Well, so our tears are absorb, absorbed into the floor. Man, this is an interest. What is happening here? Oh, actually, yes. Yeah, so this is what's happening. So, there, uh, we're going to see Natural at the third. And Hero is doing this thing. And how... I think we saw this in the in the ROG tournament once, where it's just one of those games where you kind of take, I think Parting did this, where you take you the natural the third under an eBay block. So the Terran player just kind of assumes that you're doing something crazy. Yeah, but you're not. You're, you're going Phoenix opener into whatever. And that's exactly what Beyond is doing here. He's assuming something crazy. He's getting Magfield Accelerator. He's got a bunker. Uh, Beyond is not taking his natural. And we talked about not wanting a 3-0. Well, I think we're in a really good spot for that because Beyond has his kneecapped himself. 
in this game. Okay, so now Beyond has started to realize that there's going to be a natural here. Uh, I don't believe he scouted it, but I mean, he's like, there's nothing coming in. No Voidary has It's four minutes. No Voidary has showed up. No uh, Stalkers from a three gate have shown on up. So here he's just going to find have found himself a really nice advantage. And he actually, uh, so his Phoenix play may not be as useful with the cy couple Cyclones coming on up, but I mean, Magfield Accelerators against a Terra, the Protoss army that is doing this is not all that useful. It's bonus damage to armored units. Uh, folks, Phoenixes are not armored units. They're light. Depths are not armored either. So, you know, honestly, I want to see Magfield Accelerator get canceled, but it looks like Bion is going to allow that to complete. I think the answer is 20 years ahead of the Phoenix meta, not even like there's what Roddy does and then there's what normal people do and it's just, yeah you'll love to see it so we're going to go on up to Phoenix charge lot here from Hero, uh, the Zest style of build but it's going to be one with a, an extremely heavy Phoenix focus. We're already at seven Phoenix. He's going to go up to like 10 Phoenix and just absolutely dominate things. I, I The cool thing about these really heavy Phoenix openers, I'm talking like seven, eight, nine, ten 10 Phoenix, is you have your Phoenix lift ability for multiple engagements. Right? Traditionally, Phoenix Colossus is five Phoenix. You have them fly in. You get the lifts on like one fight. And then the Phoenix all die. And you're like, okay, whatever. It's traditional ground. When you go for, for something like this, you can lift up a lot more and really invalidate the uh, Terran economy or the Terran uh, army. And on top of that, of course, you get lifts for multiple fights. That's where things get really interesting indeed. So we're going up to nine Phoenix at the very least here. Charge now coming on in plus one as well. And I think, well, okay, actually, no, it looks like there's a probe in the natural. See, I think this means that uh, we're going to see something really all in here for just look to get aggressive. But no, he's going to get his third base. All right, yeah, so Charge the Archon coming in behind this. That being said, the commitment to three Cyclones early on, I mean, Magfield Accelerator is really suboptimal. But the commitment to Magfield, or getting the Cyclones here, does mean that these Phoenix are not getting a whole lot done. And Beyond looks like he's just going to gear up for a uh, plus one Stim Combat Shield time, because he is getting his third Barracks coming on in now. Starport just about done. And... I don't like that. I th Just take your third base beyond. Except that this game is going to go later. Because, I mean, let's be real. You open up a charge lot Phoenix. You hope the Terran player gets aggressive. You want them to run across the map and try to make something happen. He's realistically, I mean, that is what... This, uh, this Phoenix charge lot army is not great against, say, 170 supply Terran army. But it is fantastic against 130, uh, 130 Terran Supply, especially with the addition of some Archons. Just, I mean, it's not like they're going to do a lot of damage, but they will be able to buff, they will be able to just kind of buffer for it, uh, soak damage, do all that fun stuff. And now plus one's just about done. It's going to time out right around the same time as plus one armor here for the Protoss player. And yeah, okay, beyond it, looks like he's just going to go uh, get one upgrade after the other. Probably, he should drop his third base rather soon. And uh, that should be that. I don't think, he, yeah, he really should not get too aggressive here with this uh this opening that he has as, as venture gambetta said it's looking right now like it will be a two base time here from beyond that being i really don't like that against what uh uh hero is doing that being said beyond has uh i believe so he scanned out the third base and he didn't see anything. In fact, uh, there are a lot of charge left. Okay, this is pretty cool. So it looks like here, here he's going to wait for Beyond to get active on the map, to move out from his base and just run out with, well, run into Beyond's base, the charge lots, Archons, all that fun stuff. Kind of force a weird uh, base tradey scenario because he's going to have a much bigger, better idea of when Beyond moves out. So he's going to be able to find his way into Beyond's base far before Beyond is able to find his way on into Hero's base. And then that kind of invalidates the old idea of, oh, you know, don't bait straight a Terran. But look at that. Bion's kind of faked to move out just a little bit. He's going to catch the army. 
He's gonna catch this army from Hero, so now he knows what he's against. I don't think he know. I don't think he saw exactly what type of composition Hero was going for ahead of time. Just knew there were a lot of Phoenix, so he's gonna find that army here on the left side of the map, and this is already much better here for Beyond. So third base is about halfway done. Two additional barracks as well. He's just gonna sit back. I mean, yeah, it's suboptimal to be a little bit behind on economy. He's down nine workers, which is honestly kind of at that even point for the Protoss player. Being down a base is maybe not the best thing. But because he knows what type of game Hero is trying to play, he knows how he has to play against it. Okay, that Guardian Shield feels like it was a bit of a misclick, but uh, uh, now we're going to have... Looks like Hero, is, he realizes that his time in this game is starting to run on out. All right, they're, they're come, we're talking about that 150, 160, 170 supply point where, well, it's not that army that uh, Hero has not nearly as inspiring. And well, it's rapidly running out here. So the tank's going to siege on up here, but it's not going to do all that much as Bion just micros himself back on in a natural here. Phoenix trying to get the lifts off, but that's not working out whatsoever. A hero is going to break himself on the meat grinder of Bion. And yeah, there's a third base, and that's going to probably force Bion to move out on the map just a little bit. But there are no warpins here. And the Phoenix, they're trying to get the lifts that they can. Beyond now, he's up 20 army supply. The army here is melting. The Phoenix are not doing what they need to do. The Archons have all gone down. And he has 13 SCVs have died. But Beyond, he's got to drop in the main base as well. Target firing down plus one. That's not going to be a thing in this game. And Beyond, he's going to lift up. He's going to drop back. And yeah, this drop is dead. Sure, that's fine. It does not matter because Beyond has his third base established now. He's only down... Uh, He's only down, what, 12 workers. That's totally fine here because he does have three base mules and he has eviscerated the army of Hero. That timing that Hero was looking for, it's not there anymore. That and plus one was canceled. It looks like Hero's going to look to move on in once again for another bit of an engagement here. And, uh, okay, one of mine's not going to be all that impressive. But Beyond knows where Hero is. And these just these minefields all over the all ever everywhere just make it so hard for here to do what he wants, which is attack in one place and put harassment somewhere else. Oh, nice quick pull here. Only one SCV will uh, kick the bucket for that one. And now ghosts are hitting, hitting the field. You want to talk about what invalidates Phoenix? High supply invalidates Phoenix with ghosts, EMPs make Phoenix just about useless. Yeah, they can fight uh, medevacs. That's fine, but not really. That's not what you're looking for. You're looking for their lifts on the tanks, on the tech, on the marauders, on the, on the Widow Mines. And, uh, well, if they all just get EMP'd out, it doesn't do all that much. So now this uh, expeditionary, expeditionary force on the left-hand side. If Hero will get this one, this is going to be rather nice for our smiling assassin. But the Widow Mines are going to get kited onto, and now the rest of the army of Beyond is here. And, yeah, Hero's going to be forced to back on out. Enhanced Shockwave's done in 10 seconds, and uh, that's going to be Beyond's timing, I think, with six ghosts as well. Okay, that storm, though, is going to be rather nice, but it's only going to be one. It's not going to be enough to kill really very much of anything. And now the Archons are going to go on down here. Uh, that's just uh, some dead Archons. There we go. Yeah, now really starting to snowball his supply. He's doubling the army supply of his opponent. So, yeah, he's down eight workers. Uh, sorry, 12 workers. That's fine. But it's 106 army supply to 64. He's up in tech, and uh, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to stop this army. As there we go. So we saw some attempted storms. They got targeted down. They got EMP'd on down. There are, looks like one more storm, a couple more if Bion waits a little bit uh, out here, uh, outside of the natural, uh, between the natural and the third base of Hero. And now with the last of the run by here, there's nothing really for Bion to worry about on his opponent's side of the map. So it's really just all about what he can get done here. So now we're going to see attempted storms, but they're not going to work. The sent Oh, the High Templar go down. The Phoenix go down. And it's just, it's going from bad to worse here for Hero. He's looking for some way to make something happen. But uh, it's not going to work. EMPs, there we go. Do we have any High Templar on the map anymore? Uh, yeah, we have eight. We got a lot. Uh, the flanking storms are just going to have to be massive. Are they going to be what they need to be? The EMPs, two more go down. Uh, this is just, there's just no storms. You need the storms to make this happen. And Bion is just absolutely on top of things. 
kill enough at all. 15 army supply, 12 army supply, 13 are all that remains. The entire army of Hero is dead, and GG Pyun is going to take the grand finals here. 3 2 0. He lost one game against Shoun, and that was it. GG Pyun, you handsome man. That was dominant.